Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to try to keep this short, but it's impossible because the information is, in my opinion, too powerful to keep short. Got somebody claiming you owe them a debt and you sign the promissory note and the promissory note contains, pay attention, restriction of language, giving them the right to transfer the promissory note to anyone, to assign the promissory note to anyone, similar to this right here. Hold on. Federal Reserve Operating Circular Number 10, the borrower appoints the bank with full power of substitution to take the place of the borrower as its true lawful attorney in fact, for full irrevocable power and authority in the place or in the shoes of the borrower to endorse, assign, transfer, or deliver the collateral, the promissory note, to another party, any party, or to take any action deemed necessary. Ladies and gentlemen, these are conditions. A promissory note has to be unconditional. See this full power of substitution with irrevocable power and authority? Excuse me. Irrevocable is a condition. A promissory note must be unconditional. Once you add conditions to it, you've made it a negotiable instrument because now you get to negotiate. That's what the word negotiable means. It means to negotiate. I'm here to negotiate this check. No, I'm here to negotiate this, 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 this contract. That's why it's called a negotiable instrument. Okay? Hold on now. Just want to make sure that you understand. As attorney, in fact, the bank may take any lawful action to collect the sums due in connection with the collateral, the promissory note. The bank may release any collateral instrument or agreement securing or evidencing the obligation as fully as the borrower could do if acting for him or herself. See, you must understand, you can release the promissory note. You can release instruments. You can release the agreement securing or the evidence of the obligation. Now, we're not going to talk about that right now. We, that's Federal Reserve Operating Circular number 10. Pay attention. I'd already asked it this question, so we are going to deal with specificity. I said, did you not know that once a promissory note is converted to a negotiable instrument, it can no longer be a promissory note? Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Evidencing a promise to pay, comma, as comma, once it's been converted to a negotiable instrument, comma, it cannot be reverted back to a promissory note evidencing a promise to pay, period. As the Uniform Commercial Code, Article 9, Section 102, open paren, numeral 65, close paren, explicitly states, comma, that a promissory note cannot contain an order to pay or conditions. It must be unconditional and unambiguous. Stop listening. He got into talking about the holder in due course and all of that stuff. Ain't got nothing to do with no holder in court. Understood. Let's focus on the legal principles and statutory provisions regarding promissory notes and negotiable instruments as per the Uniform Commercial Code. Promissory note as defined is an instrument that evidences a promise to pay a monetary obligation, does not evidence an order to pay. Okay, number A, negotiable instruments are an unconditional promise or order to pay a fixed amount of money. Hold on, let's make sure. Remember, right there, you can go to 4A and document that a promise to pay is an unconditional promise to pay. When you add conditions, it's no longer a promise to pay. Payable to the bearer, payable to the order, at the time of his issuance, when it first comes into the possession of the holder. It is payable on demand or at a definite time. That's a negotiable instrument, not a promissory note. Negotiable instrument and a promissory note are not synonymous. Conversion of a promissory note to a negotiable instrument. When a promissory note is negotiated, it essentially becomes a negotiable instrument under the UCC Article 3, the key difference is a promissory note is defined under this section, 
9102A65 cannot contain an order to pay. Once it is negotiated, it must meet the criteria of a negotiable instrument as defined in Section 3-104. Unconditional promise to pay for a promissory note to be considered as such, the promise to pay must be unconditional. It aligns with UCC 9202A65 requiring that a promissory note must not contain conditions or orders to pay. <sighs> Irreversibility. Once the promissory note is converted to a negotiable instrument, it cannot be reverted back to a promissory note because the instrument has been altered to meet the criteria of a negotiable instrument under Article 3, Section 104, which includes potentially an order to pay, making it no longer the definition of a promissory note. Legal status. The status of the instrument as directed by its current form and function, a negotiable instrument can be transferred, endorsed, enforced under the provisions of UCC Article 3, which governs negotiable instruments, unlike promissory notes, which remains under the scope of Article 9 if used as collateral. If used as collateral. In summary, under the UCC, once a promissory note is negotiated and thus converted into a negotiable instrument, it loses its original classification and it cannot be reverted back to a promissory note. Each one of you, your grandmamas, your grandfathers, any of you who have a conventional home loan, pay attention. If you have a promissory note that you signed before any financial institution, if you have that note and it was signed by a financial institution that is governed by the Federal Reserve Act, then it is no longer a promissory note because when you signed it, your conventional promissory note, just look at the bottom of your note. If it says single family at the bottom, it doesn't matter if it says single family, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. As long as it says single hyphen family at the bottom of your note, including your deeds of trust, it is no longer a promise to pay. Why? Because that single family home loan guarantee program allows that note to be transferred, assigned, and or negotiated. With that language, with the, the negotiability language, it is no longer a promissory note. And when you sign it, that's called a blank endorsement. That's why they can stamp it, pay to the order, because you left it blank. All right. Hey, guys, all you have to do is read. It's right there. Here, here are the codes. I gave it to you in the last video. Go watch the video on. Let's show you. Hold on. Got to close this anyway. We're going to go. I said close. We can go all the way back here. Save your own house from foreclosure with this. There is a chat GPT. That link right there. All you do is copy HTTP. Watch this. All you do is when you get it, you copy that and paste it. Watch this. Copy. And hold on, pasty. We're going to paste it here. We don't want to search for it. We just want to pasty. Pasty there and enter. Now, I want y'all to pay attention because some of y'all don't know how to pay attention. So watch what we do here. Now, y'all saw the conversation I just said. I'm going to put the current link under this one. But watch what I do here. Come on down. You're the next contestant on the price. Anyway, we're going to go all the way up to the tippity, 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 top. Okay? And that's that's what I said. Tippity, 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 top. Like hickory and dickory. That's right. They they just kept running. I don't know about no striking nobody's 12. Okay, because you strike 12 and 12 might strike back. You know what I'm saying? Revenge of the 12s. The 12 strike back. And we're going to copy. Then we're going to go over to this one, the one that I just did, and we're going to paste the whole thing. Okay? The whole thing. And we're going to... Cha-ching. It's going to tell me that's too long, homie. That, that's way too much information. Uh-oh, it's going to revise the petition, y'all. Look at there, look at there, look at there. And guess what it ain't going to do? I need y'all to pay attention. 
what it ain't going to do is it ain't going to put any case law. It's going to use maxims of law. As I stated in the video, go do your research on maxims of law, how the courts must follow maxims. They don't have a choice. That's what we're doing here. We're forcing them to have no other choice. Now, I don't like this right here. When he does that, I didn't tell him to do that. So we're going we gonna to get rid of that. We, we want him to do what he's doing, but we don't want him to do the code because those are codes. I want to be able to copy and paste. I don't want to be able to code and paste. Mess up my motion. See what I'm saying? My second daddy motion. Okay, he's doing, he's explaining what it's used for. See, summary of the petition for injunction against non-judicial foreclosure and demand for a jury trial. Nobody said jury trial. No, we're going to make him do it again. I'm not even going to tell him about a jury trial because he know I didn't ask for no stupid jury trial. I said trial by jury. Y'all know me. I don't ever say nothing about no stupid jury trial. Wake up. Weren't you instructed to strictly follow my prompt? To follow my command? Question mark, period. How dare you suggest somebody suggest suggested or asked for or even thought of requesting a jury trial when you know the Constitution guarantees a trial by jury, you idiot. Do not deviate from the script. You're going to redo each of the petitions now in the context for which I demanded you do them comma, favoring this petitioner, comma, the U.S. borrower. And do not forget to include my maxims of law for each point raised, you idiot. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't actually have to use this. Now, remember, this is designed for regular state court or district court, okay? It's universal. That's what we did for you. You want to go to district court, go to district court. You want to go to state court, go to state court. You want to add all your junk in here? This is designed for you to add your junk. But I promise you ain't nobody kicking this out because they going to claim that this ain't worth it. This You can't do this. You uh -uh, Ain't nobody. This is gobbledygook. Ain't nobody doing that. Not with this one. OK. We bring the whole jurisdictional issue in here and they have a thing, a petition for injunction against non-judicial foreclosure. Because we're saying non-judicial foreclosure is unconstitutional. That's what we're doing. So, ladies and gentlemen, take the time to go over this document, go over this chat GPT. Now, remember the prompt I just put in, just take it and copy it all the word, because the prompt that I just put in, it includes all of the others. So we're going to do the continue. Got to go all the way down to the bottom because he sent me back to the top. He is an idiot. Wake up. Didn't I say redo each of the petitions? Stop listening. Let me, I'm going to see because the other petition should be here, the actual complaint. So I'm going to let him do this because I don't have a problem with him doing this. Uh, he added the statute at large without me asking him to add the statute at large. The fact that he's doing it a little bit more detailed this time, I'm going to let him do it a little bit more detailed. Look, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. If you go over this and you see that there are some things that need to be corrected, don't email me. Don't text me. Don't write me and ask me or tell me about what he said and what he did. This is for you. This ain't for me. So if you see something that you need to correct, then correct it. Sorry, I, I don't understand people. Look, this is not for me to help you walk through this. Okay, give me a second. Wake up. What about my redress petition? Colon. Stop listening. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I need to know which one it is. Is it this one? Uh, give me one second. Need to make sure of the right one. Let's make sure what this one is. Statement of claim, constitutional challenge, injunction, jurisdiction. Uh, which one? Uh, material evidence, blah, blah, blah. Material ex exculpatory new evidence, the court. Oh, that's, uh, that's for someone else. So I think it's this one right here. This is the one, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the top motion, not the bottom motion. You know what? Hold on. I know what the problem is. This is the one I did for mine. This is the one I did for y'all. Whew. I'm so glad we got that taken care of. See how much mold this is? All right. Y'all's, I went a little bit deeper. Okay. So let's see. Let's see what this one is entitled. We ain't going to be as long as we were yesterday. I'm getting ready to bring this to an end. Yeah, he did the same thing with the jurisdictional challenge. That's the injunction, so I don't need that injunction. Let's go, because I know he did it several times. What's the? That's the injunction. Yeah, challenging non-judicial foreclosure. And, oh, you know what? Hearing, bond, disclosure, caption. I'm going to go up and we're going to take all of this sorry hold on got to get my finger on the mouse on the pulse of society y'all keep going because we need this petition up here so we're going to make him redo it based on the information that i just put in today okay so that you'll have error error thing Copy. So you'll have error, 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 error thing. Now, there we go. Now that's a whole lot, ain't it? Because you already have your prompt. You don't have to prompt it. It already will do it. All you got to do is tell it what you need to add, people. That's what we're doing here. And because we're using statutes at large and no case law. You, saw, you heard me, I said slaw. We're not using no case citations. Why? Because we're going to use maxims of law. Okay, watch this. I'm going to let him finish. Wake up. Here, let's ask the question. What is a maxim of law? And how does it apply to judicial proceedings? Stop listening. Got to go a long way down, ain't we? Maxim of law and the application in judicial proceedings. What is a maxim of law? Maxim of law is a fundamental principle or a proposition of law. Sorry. That is universally accepted as being just and consistent with reason. Maxims are derived from centuries of legal tradition and are often precedent used by judges to guide decision making interpret laws and apply justice in a consistent and fair manner these principles are concise statements that escalate legal truths sorry it's bugs day and are widely recognized across different legal systems across different legal systems that's correct ladies and gentlemen doesn't matter if it's the united states or britain maxims of law okay he who seeks justice must do justice see equity he who seeks equity must do equity all right application in judicial proceedings guiding interpretation judges use maxims to interpret statutes regulations and case law coast law when the wording of a law is ambiguous or unclear maxims can provide a framework for understanding the legislative intent and apply the law justly okay that's what we're doing, ladies and gentlemen. Look, let me do it to you this way. They just gave us these GPT models to play with. And now we can get them to do whatever we want because guess what? 
we don't have to worry about it giving us, pay attention, a wrong case law. Or giving us a case law that doesn't say what it's supposed to say. We strictly deal with the maxims. You can pull up maxims of law anytime you want. You can even give it maxims of law. Watch this. Wake up. Give me a list of 110 maxims of law. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen. The reason why I did 110 because technically it ain't 110, but we're going to stick with 110. The reason why I did that is because now when you get this particular one, you're going to have the maxims of law already in place. Okay, and you notice how he's using the so-called French, Latin, English, junk, quid pro quo, okay? Just got to understand this, ladies and gentlemen. You got to understand these are facts. These are not guesses. These are not presumptions. You, a maxim of law is not a presumption. This is how you overcome their presumptions. You feel me? This is how you overcome their presumption. So, woo-wee, look at that. He went all the way on up. Look, at the guy went to 100, and then he gave me my 10. Now, watch this. Wake up. Now, I want you to incorporate these maxims into the petition for injunction and the petition before the court demanding a trial by jury known as the redress petition, period. But you must do so in context. According to my instructions as given in this conversation and the prompts that I have provided you, do not deviate, comma, do not add nuances. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, now that you are starting to understand a little bit more about maxims and how maxims work and how it is literally genius that I don't use coleslaw. I'm sorry, I just went outside. I was dealing with water. Um, we've been having 119 degree days here and I have a swamp cooler that I've uh, just realized how to work properly. And so I got the swamp cooler working properly, finally. And it is uh, it, it was an interesting adventure. Uh, right now it's 87. That's because I was too lazy to go out there and tend to it. But I just have to go out there twice a day, and that's just it. Okay, well, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. But look, see, redress petition, demand for a jury. See, he keeps saying jury trial. So... We're going to do this again. Wake up. And you stupid idiot. Do not substitute my trial by jury with jury trial, you moron. I told you to follow my prompt and do not deviate, and to write this petition in favor that best re represents my interests as the petitioner, as the U.S. borrower, comma, and you are to do so in a way to where it is more than likely to be successful, exclamation mark. Is that understood, idiot? Stop listening. Stop. 
Okay. There's my trial by jury, ladies and gentlemen. Don't want a jury trial. That's a statutory right. I don't want to bring up any statutory rights. Well, you got statutory rights. Oh, Lord. You need to learn a little bit more about law before you start speaking up. I'm using the Uniform Commercial Code on purpose because they claim that that's their contractual law. Now, mind you, you will have to get it to put the UCC for your state. Don't just use the regular national UCC because that's only recommendational. Use the one for your state and the UCC that's national. Okay, but again, do you see all of these, um, what do you call it, maxims that it added? So there you go. This is for you all. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I got to go. I'm tired. It's been a long day. It's been a hot day. Like I said, this temperature right now, it is still 105 degrees outside. Okay. And I just came from out there too. Lord have mercy. So we going to let it be what it is. And it's 630 and it's 105. Okay. Had another wildfire start about 60 miles away saw the smoke still looking at the smoke in the sky it looks like they've tackled it it looks like they've attacked it and got it under control but i'll know in about two hours because the infrared for the cameras will let me be able to see if there is fire that's the only good thing about the cameras ladies and gentlemen being infrared at night being able to see at night got night vision you'll be able to see a fire you'll be able to see the heat okay now again you're going to have the link for this. It's going to be the link, the same type of link as in the other video. Okay? This is where you prepare your petition. Ladies and gentlemen, all the work is done for you. Stop stressing out. Take them to court. Learn the first 10 rules of the court. How do you learn the first 10 rules of the court? Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. I need to learn the first 10 rules of the federal district court. Comma, can you give me a brief rundown of what the first 10 rules of the federal district court are and what are the exceptions to each of these rules? Question mark. Stop listening. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how you learn the rules of the court for your court. You just put it in here. And if there's something you don't understand, then have it explain it to you as if you were 15. So tell them, explain it to me as if I'm a 15-year-old. Then break each rule down that you have to comply with. Okay? Each rule that they say you must comply with. Remember, I asked it for exceptions. Okay? Now watch this. Wake up. Wake up. I asked you for a thorough explanation. I didn't ask you for a general explanation, comma, and now you're going to explain it to me as if I was pro se, comma, one of them people who don't know nothing about law, just a layman, comma, is that understood? Stop listening. I dropped my mic. Okay, so now he's explaining the basic rules of the court. You're going to find the state rules are pretty similar. You're going to do the exact same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to tell you how you don't need a lawyer. I'm trying to tell you how in each one of your cases where you're so stressed out and you're trying to hire somebody and call somebody, all you have to do, okay, a lawyer is going to cost you $1,500 at least just to file the first set of motions. All you have to do is Literally, and I'm not joking, schedule a consult, and I'll walk you through the stupid rules. I'll walk you through the steps as to what you need. I'll tell you what motions are the basic motions that need to be filed in every single situation you run into, plus give you some in addition. Okay? Remember, if anybody brings a summary judgment against you, all you have to do is tell the court that there are material facts and evidence and at controversy that the law prohibits the court from entering a judgment against you. Now, here's what you do. Wake up. 
the judge issued uh, a summary judgment against me, comma, and I need to do a motion to overturn that summary judgment motion, comma, and I know I can go back in the court and get the summary judgment overturned by saying that there was a controversy before the court. Can you list six other reasons for which a summary judgment may be overturned and then provide me a petition before the court, whether state or federal, a general motion that applies to both, comma, that can get a summary judgment overturned, question mark, and question mark, comma, I want you to do this particular petition in regards to a case where a foreclosure was issued based on summary judgment, comma, however, they used a promissory note that was not unambiguous, comma, that had conditions, comma, a promissory note that was unconditional that qualified as a, open quote, negotiable instrument, close quote, period. A promissory note is a promise to pay, comma, a negotiable instrument is not a simple promise to pay contract and thus does not qualify under Article 9 as a promissory note as defined by law, exclamation mark. And then you're going to add my maxims, comma, and you're not going to use any revised statutes or any United States codes, comma, but you're going to use maxims of law and statutes at large to prove each point, and I want at least three proofs associated with each point raised. Comma, do you understand? Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, you will do this. I said it wasn't going to be as long as the last video, and it appears that it will be. Sorry, you can't do this stuff in, this stuff in just a simple way. But please understand, if you had a summary judgment issued against you, then this is where you're going to start. Like I said, you don't need an attorney anymore, especially since you just use maxims of law. I just told you the prompt to put in, and you do it according to your situation. And you'll see that you don't have to deal with the stupidity, people. Stop, stop dealing with these idiots who are telling you that they are some genius at the law understand the procedures because that's all you're dealing with now hold on you see he did such a good job that i want him to do it again because i know he made mistakes that's right you do it at least twice and you'll get what you're looking for sorry now they're going to change it up because of this video but they won't change it up too much because they're that stupid to realize that they will lose a whole lot of people and then we'll just go to a different platform that's what they're mad at, people. That's what they're blocking access because of. It's just the way it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do it one more time, but I'm going to let y'all go because there's no reason for us to keep going. I don't already gave y'all way too much. Hey, it's all right if nobody gives me credit for the genius behind these two videos, but somebody going to get it eventually. Somebody going to realize, man, that's all I need. Okay, a couple people have already said that, but somebody's gonna realize the genius behind the, the madness. All right, take care, everybody. Gotta go.